So finally, the iOS 18.2 beta is out and it comes with some new unexpected features, including something called visual intelligence. So we're going to dive right into it without wasting your time. And obviously, most of you guys are interested in that visual intelligence, Apple intelligence stuff. So we're going to start off from there right here. If you update it, it's going to say visual intelligence with camera control. Learn about the objects and places around you and get even more information about what you see. So in order to access visual intelligence, it's pretty simple. You're going to go ahead and hold the camera control if you have that button. So with this visual intelligence, you'll be able to scan anything in your surrounding and you'll be able to find out some good information using ChatGPT and the Google. So these are the two different sources that visual intelligence uses. So technically it's still that same AI, but it's using your camera to find out information about your surroundings, certain objects, certain restaurants, a grocery store or certain animals. You can literally scan anything and find out information about that specific thing or even look up similar images using the Google within this visual intelligence. Pretty cool change. But besides that, next thing that we have is a new app. When you just update to the iOS 18.2, it's gonna come with this default app from Apple called Playground. And using this app, you will be able to uh, create your own AI images. And you do have to request to early access. You have to basically join the waitlist. I have already done so. But it's gonna take us some time to get access. As you guys can see, you'll be able to do create your own images, create your own gen emojis, as well as something called image went, which is basically rough sketches that you can do with your hand or with the Apple Pencil and then it will be able to create an image off of that which is kind of cool. This is a really cool app. I'm really excited to test it out. I haven't got it access yet but hopefully in the next few days I will be able to get access and definitely subscribe down below so I can keep you guys updated on what this is and also how long it took me to get access. So if you want to see that definitely subscribe down below to stay up to date. So next new feature is within the writing tools. Writing tools get some improvements including the re writing feature it's no longer just limited to three styles of text on so when you just type in anything and then ask it to rewrite it's not just limited to be in any tone that you like with the help of the AI it will be able to write a more dynamic words or turn an email into a poem stuff like this you guys get the idea so a really cool feature to see but moving forward now on the next feature we have in within the control center we have some new stuff including the type Siri if you look up type Siri you can see that we have a new quick access button for type Siri. So if you don't want to speak to the Siri or that Apple intelligence, you can just click on here and you will be able to just text anything you want to the Siri. If we now move on to the next feature. We have a new feature called volume limit. If you open up your settings and then go to your uh, sounds and haptics and scroll down where it says build in speaker underneath it, you can see volume limit. Go ahead and click on it and set a maximum volume. So with this feature now, you can pretty much set a volume for anything that your speaker can play, including like songs, movies, and other media. It does not, however, impact the phone calls, FaceTime calls, alarms, and other sounds, So, which is really, really good. So if you have some difficulty with loud noises, you can just set a maximum limit. So that way it doesn't just start playing a video loudly so you can prevent that, which is really, really nice. Besides that, within the settings, we do have a default app section now dedicated that can be used to manage your default apps for the iPhone. So if you go to your apps right here, scroll all the way down and choose default apps, you guys can see, you can set up default apps for email, messaging, uh, calling, call filtering, browser app, password and codes and keyboard. So it's really nice to see more options for default apps and Apple giving us more ability to set third party apps as our default apps, which is really, really nice. Besides that on the iOS 18.2, we have more new language support for Apple intelligence, including the English in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, and the UK, in addition to the US English. So if you are in Canada, for example, or Australia, you no longer need to put the US English to use Apple intelligence. So it's really good change. And hopefully we get more languages besides just English, English in the moving weeks or month. So now moving forward, if you open up your voice memos, we have some changes in the voice memos on the iOS 18.2 beta. We have the ability to record two audio tracks on top of each other. Right here, as you guys can see, these new buttons were added. I can replace them and also I can edit these layers later on after I have recorded it. I can click on replace and be able to replace the layer that I just recorded. And then not only that, I can just record another layer on top of it and mix two tracks, which is uh, kind of impressive to be honest on a default voice app. You don't expect 
to be able to do stuff like this. So it's really nice that Apple uh, gave us this option for those of you who are professionals, maybe you record voices and stuff like this. So it's really nice addition on the iOS 18.2. Besides that, some changes in the mail app. Uh, we do have new building categories for separating out important emails, deals, newsletters, transactions, emails, and more. Mail app includes bigger pictures for contacts and businesses and all emails from single person or source will be pulled together. Besides that, in the app store if you go ahead and open up your app store and go to arcade we do have a new drop down filter menu and the option to turn off uh, game previews so it's a really good addition moving over to europe we do have some app deletion in europe now users have the ability to delete uh, core apps including the app store safari messages camera and photos which is if you think about it it's crazy imagine you don't have app store in the iphone what are you talking about but yes if you are in the eu you can delete app stores and camera apps basically any apple app you can just delete them even the core apps which is uh, pretty crazy to be honest how much they demanded from apple and apple has to comply with them and also third-party browsers apps in the eu will be able to create web apps for iphones home screen using their own custom engines with ios 18.2 launches and last but not least if you go back to the settings in the safari section if you just scroll down right here to apps and then find out safari right there if you open up safari and scroll down to privacy and security all the way down here we have a new feature that says not secure connection warning you do have to turn this on by default it will be coming turned off and basically what this toggle does is that it lets you know if you are visiting a website that does not have a valid ssl certificate for an encrypted connection so it's not advised to basically send your passwords or other sensitive sensitive data on a side that pops up saying not secure warning so however you have to turn this on just be sure that you turn this on because it's really nice privacy feature on the ios 18.2 but nonetheless guys these are some of the new features that i was able to uh, discover so far let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i hope you guys enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up because it really helps the channel out and also subscribe down below for more interesting ios videos coming up every single week thanks again for watching in the meantime check out these videos i'll catch you guys next video Peace out.